A uh, really good day of prep for our guys. Uh, pleased with the progress as we get closer and closer to traveling. We'll be out tomorrow after our practice in the morning. We'll travel that way. Um, you know, our guys have a great mindset right now. Uh, again, I think I said it before, the hay's not in the barn. We got a lot of work to do. We're going to keep working until the ball's kicked. Uh, that being said, we can open up for questions. We haven't gone through what is the uh, end of game week, so you mentioned practicing to the, uh, tomorrow and then leaving tomorrow then. But in terms of Friday, are you a hotel walkthrough guy, a stadium walkthrough guy? Uh... Yeah, we'll get a walkthrough. Um, we'll, we'll have a, an activation lift for our guys. Um, we'll use the Falcons facility a little bit. We'll use uh, the stadium. Okay. How's the practice squad been in terms of giving you guys good looks? Phenomenal. I mean, I think every single day I've been able to point out somebody different that's embracing the role for our team to be successful. And, and that look ultimately is what's going to lead to our success. Who was it today? Um, you know, Zebo uh, is a guy that's really stuck out to me. He's done a great job. Um, you know, each day, you know, I, I think we've gotten a really good look from the look O and the look B. I, honestly, I couldn't single out one guy. Uh, but that's one of the guys we pointed out this morning uh, in meetings. Looks like Terrell's out there, number 19, coming at, kind of to mimic Brock Bowers. How has he done in that role? What have you like from there? Yeah, he's done a great job. You know, Terrell's pushes every single day. Um, you know, obviously there's several guys that are giving us that look. We've had T. Ferg and Mo over there giving us those looks. Um, I think it's really important to, to, you know, try to simulate some of that size and speed that they have at the tight end position. Will you do that throughout camp or throughout the season using some of your regular guys on the scout team? Yeah, you do whatever you can to give the best look for the other side of the ball, and that's part of being embracing that team role. Is that part of what Dante Thornton's doing this week for you We've had a lot of guys doing uh, it, but Dante's been a phenomenal look. He's also a big, big part of our game plan. How is the kicking competition? It's good. Is there a leader in either position? Yeah. Week? How hard is okay. it to replicate a guy like Brock Bowers? Can you just talk about his, his versatility and what he can do on the tight end position? Uh, yeah, I mean, Brock has a tremendous work ethic, but he catches the ball well and he runs like a wide out. You know, it's just really unique when you're talking about a guy that's over 220 pounds that moves like he moves. He probably would run a, as fast a 40 as any, uh, you know, several of their other wide outs, which is pretty impressive, his ability to move and what that looks like. Will you guys hit before Friday or before Saturday, or is this, are you done with your full contact practices? Uh, to, be de to be determined. You guys have any outside of football plans while you're in Atlanta, kind of team building stuff? We're going there for work. We got a job. Is recruiting an opportunity for you on the road just because here on a Friday it may be hard logistically, Dan, but if you want to hit the Atlanta area, the yeah. southeast in particular, theoretically you could. Yeah, nor normally I'd say that's probably uh, something that we would look to do this early in the season. That's not our biggest concern. You know, first time traveling for me, I want to get you know everybody familiar with that process. First time we talked to you, first day of fall camp, you're a little overwhelmed by how much work this team had to do. Now that you're one day away from leaving, how do you feel like your team is going into, you know, we're getting out of play tomorrow and we're going to play? Yeah, you know, I, I think one, our, our players have really embraced the work, the extra work needed. Um, that being said, I still think there's opportunities for us to prepare and get ready and, and continue to improve in between now and the game. Uh, a lot of things that we can clean up. And then I think it's our jobs as coaches to simplify the game plan as we get closer to kickoff. And a lot of the players have talked about a lot of that work that needs to be put in from now until game time being off the field work. So talk about how the importance of that between now and kickoff will kind of determine how you guys come out and play in your mentality. Yeah, mental prep, the way you uh, you know hydrate, right? The, you know, first games you see more guys cramped than any other game of the year. I think it's really important that we take care of our bodies and we're conscientious of you know, of that piece, the nutrition aspect, the extra film work. So, um, you know, we got a we got a flight that we can watch a little film in while we're while we're on that trip. Um, you also got to take a chance to check out a little bit for your players and give them that opportunity. How much does the experience of your veteran offensive line maybe come to play this week against some really talented guys? I we talked about Jalen already on Monday, but a lot of talent on that Georgia defense. Yeah, I think we'll see. You know, um, wait till the game play. But but obviously that experience is a big advantage for us. Um, I think we got to wait till the ball gets out there to see how it plays out. You had to defend Kyrus a lot, obviously, in practice. What is it that makes him such an effective target? You know, I think Kyrus is just tough-nosed uh, kid that you know he's had, he's faced some adversity with injuries, but you know, catches the ball well. He's steady, Eddie, consistent. Can block on the perimeter. They use him really well in the blocking game as well. Can go back there and return kicks. So he's kind of a you know a Swiss Army knife for them. You you mentioned the other day, kind of. Recovering from camp and kind of getting your legs back on you. I think Ben had mentioned that too. We're going to taxi camp yeah. and kind of transitioning the game. What was that? How do you balance kind of helping guys 
recover from camp while also ramping up for a game? Do you feel like everybody's got their legs under them at this point? Yeah, it's a hard balance. You know, it's a hard balance. We still have some recovery days between now and, and game day, so I think that'll certainly help. Um, I would say this, I'd rather uh, push and overwork now on the front end and feel like we didn't do enough later on. I feel like that's where we're at as a team, but we're, we're definitely in recovery mode uh, and being really conscientious of every rep we take. Christian Gonzalez said about the mental prep going into this game. He said, it's something we've been doing since we're five years old. And, like, we, we all know what we're doing. Can you talk about what you voice to your players about the mental prep going into the week one game? Yeah, just control what you can control. You know, I said it earlier, play the, play the game, not the occasion. Uh, I got to focus on the small details. I can't do somebody else's job. I have to do mine, right? And every single defensive call or offensive call has a job that I'm responsible for. Even if I'm on the sideline, what's my role in that moment? So embracing your role, making sure you're focused on the details for you, uh, really important to carry over in this game. I'm sure you've seen that Kirby said he knows who your quarterback is going to be. Do you think he's on to something? Or? I don't know. I'm not really worried about it. I know you weren't part of last year's team, but have you seen maybe players last year's game against Ohio State, another example of a non-conference game going across the country, underdogs? Have they referenced that in terms of is there value to that? You know, every year is different. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about the past or the future. I mean, we're trying to live really right now in the present, but I think our guys have supreme confidence in their ability. This will be the first pregame speech you give, Dan, and obviously a pretty big opponent for it. Where do you get inspiration for crafting such a message? You know, uh, the speech ain't going to win this game, right? We're going to let, let our players play, right? Mm -hmm. Dan, who have you used in practice to kind of mimic Stetson Bennett's uh, scrambling and mobility? Yeah, you know, Jake Van Dyne's given us a really good look at quarterback all week. We've also done some good on good periods where we've increased, you know, some of that scrambling opportunities. And Ty and Bo do a really good job on their feet, you know, so I think that's been good to get um, when they're giving us that same look. Do you feel like Stetson kind of got enough credit for that national championship of that playoff run? Yeah, probably not. Right, he won a national championship. That's a pretty big deal. So, um, like I said before, you know, Stetson exudes confidence. He has more confidence in himself. It really doesn't matter what everybody else thinks, you know, when it comes to Stetson. But obviously, he's a great player and he's done a good job for that team. Welcome on that pregame. Last play, question. Is, is uh, Eminem's "I Am" one of those hype songs for you? No, it's not. No. Appreciate you guys. Right, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Thanks.